Hi everyone, so today in this video I'll be trying out uh, the English Rose stamp and die set that Dime Press has brought to HSN. Um, I have been able to see a little bit of this in the sneak peek and um, in the links there and it just looks like a really beautiful set. Um, so it was sent free of charge for my review and of course all opinions are my own and any links are in the description box will be affiliate links which means I'll make a small commission if you are purchase items to those links. So thanks for using those if you would like to. Oh my goodness, I'm trying not to break nails, so <laughs> here we go. Um, let's check this guy out. Oh, look at this. So cute. Nice size on the teapot there. Let's open it up. It has a lot of roses, a lot of like those kinds of stamps, and then also obviously you can cut out your uh, so you can cut out the teacup and the teapot there, and then just tons of um Beautiful stamps. I'll show you those in just a minute. So again, uh, they do come with the new adhesive sheets that Die Impress is creating. They have little gray dots to help you adhere your die cuts, and hopefully by now you've seen them in a few different videos. So we have those, and the instruction with that. It does come with a cutting folder for the marquee, but uh, if you don't have a marquee, you can just put that to the side for something else. But um, any machine that you have that cuts thin metal dies will cut these thin metal dies. And then here we have the stamps and the die. So let me just show you the inspo sheet here. So they're showing you, you can do the stamping of the teapot, then you cut it out. You know, you can put a sentiment in there, maybe just a little decoration in there, which is really cute. You have your teacup, you can also decorate. You have all these cute um, pieces. So the flowers, the larger one, this little guy, you also have a die for the um, butterfly and the little teapot, I thought that was so cute. And then a little like sprig, the word cheers. Um, oh, look at this. So you can stamp that and also cut them out. Is it on one? Okay, it's three different. Okay, so you have three different, these guys right here, for that little set of posies. So if you want to cut them out, you can do that or just use them as decoration. The tea tag, that little piece of your tea bag, that little tag guy, you can also cut. Um, sprigs, cute little heart, and stamps. So those are dies. These are stamps. Um, you know, for the most terrific mom, you mean everything to me, beyond grateful for you, you make my heart bloom, lots of cute sentiments, and then there's some inspo here. Funny enough, I was thinking about a tag, but they have a tag on a slimline card for that one. Super cute, look how cute that is, all filled with, um, the little flowers, or something like this, right? So, I mean, lots of ways to play with this guy. Uh, let me show you the stamps. Really cute. I love this one. I just think it's so pretty. And then that's the smaller rose. And then there's a little um, stem here that looks like you're going to pair it with one of these guys. So you have that one. And then you have the larger um, rose over here. And then your butterfly again. Some that are just kind of like background stamps and some that are uh, you're able to cut out with the dies. Look at the little heart. So cute. Sprigs. All those things. This little guy is so cute. Oh my goodness. Where is that little guy? Oh, you know what? There's not a stamp for him. That is just a die. Adorable. Um, okay, so let me give you some sizing on these guys. The teapot's like three and a half inches tall and just four and a quarter inches, possibly from metal to metal there. And your little teacup is like two and a quarter, closer to two and a half, maybe three inches wide. So what I'm going to do is grab some paper as a card base and all that good stuff and we will get started. I think I'm going to do a little background with some stamping, maybe a little artsy. So I'm going to use some of the new watercolor paper that Diane Press has brought. Um, let's think. I don't know if I want to go with like red, red, possibly. Um, okay, yeah, let's make it really classic. What I'm going to do is be kind of fun and artsy with it. So we're going to use a little spray bottle with water, this little guy, and I'll take the roses. Now I can wet this and then stamp or stamp and wet this and then go. So I just want it to look, I mean, you can make it look prim and proper, right, with the thing there, but what I want to do is kind of make it a little more playful, a little more artsy. Just kind of stamp that there. That soak in. Pretty. Okay, and then I can either wipe it off or just keep going into my ink pad. I don't really want to go into the ink pad with a lot of water, so I'm just going to do that. Go back in here. Spray it a little bit there. Maybe a little bit there. And just here and there. I'm just going to stamp some of these guys. We have a smaller rose, too. We can think about for now. Let's do those two. Let me grab my green inks too. I want to do some of the leaves. 
like these guys. I just think they're so pretty. So I think what I'll do is put the teapot kind of like in here somewhere. So I kind of have an idea where I want to, you know, stamp some of these things. But let me get my green ink. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. Interesting enough, when I sprayed it and some of the water got a little bit of red on here. I don't know if you can see it, the little speckles. It looks cool. I'll just leave it like that. Uh, parsley, let's try this one. And I ink that up. I may put my hand on it this time. There we go. <laughs> and a little something kind of going down this way. Right? Ooh. That's where it is on here. Okay, and let me wipe that off again. Actually, you can probably keep stamping because the green ink will still be waiting there for you. There we go. A little something. It'll clean some of this up so I don't have too much liquid going everywhere. Um, let's see. Maybe another little set right down here. Cute. Like I said, you can probably just keep stamping with it. Maybe something in here. Yep, a little something that's a little bit lighter. And let's see. Maybe I'll just keep using this in a way to help me see what I'm doing. Okay, let's go with a lighter, different pink. And we'll take the little guy. And, or a different kind of red. So let's just go with with this one. A little something, a little something, maybe we can go right here. Cute, it's gonna be like a little bit of a suggestion of a rose, right? Um, maybe another one down in here. I'm just going to turn that there. Just so I have an idea. This guy's cut out and it's here. Cute. Um, maybe another little greenery. Again, I'm just having fun. I mean, we have other greenery we can use too. Uh, I'll just keep going with this one. Put a little water on that. Take up a little bit of that extra. And maybe something like right here. Okay. And maybe a little bit more up here. Okay, I'm going to let that dry, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, as I was putting things away, I thought, you know, I do want to put a little extra in the background, so don't really have to let it quite dry, because I'm going to come in. And with some of the new watercolors, I'm just going to grab a little bit of the tealish color, and I have water in this water brush that I just have here so I'm just going to use that but just get that water going and I'm going to grab some of this teal and just uh, maybe go in here first just to see how dark that might be very Kath Kidston colors in my opinion again I just kind of want it to be a little bit just a suggestion of this here and there so again just a little water and of course you can water things down just by squeezing your water brush more or less. I am loving that. It's a little bit darker. And again, if you think you know you went too dark, just squeeze it again and more water will come out and help you dilute whatever you have there. And that just kind of grounds everything in the background. Looks pretty. Okay, so now I'll let this all set up. <laughs> I'll probably hit it with a heat tool, so just to get it going. And I'll be back. Okay, guys, so I'm going to put that to the side. I did hit it with a heat tool, so it got a little warpy, but that's what happens when you hit something with a heat tool. Okay, so we have that. Um, I'm just going to use white paper, I think. So it's like a porcelain, you know, white, basic teapot. And I'm trying to think if I'm going to color this at all. So this is not watercolor paper, it's just white card stock that I have. Um, but I think I'll use this. And I'll just use a hybrid ink just in case I decide to color it one way or another. So, oh, let's close this. 
I mean, with the watercoloring, kind of faux watercoloring in the background, it'd be really cute to do same kind of thing like with some of these other uh, stamps or just freehand some little flowers or something that you paint your pot or your teacup. That'd be really cute. So I am going to use this guy. And maybe I go ahead and do our sentiment right now. Again, these are acrylic stamps. I was giving it really good pressure, but you know, it looks great. There you go. I just happen to have this little scrap here to wipe that clean with. And when I mean, we have sentiments that are like this kind of thing where you might want to cut it with like um, a little die or just cut it with your trimmer. Just delightful. You make my heart bloom. For the most terrific mom, the essence of love is kindness. Robert Louis Stevenson. Now this kind of thing I would put on the inside of the card. So it's really nice that we have some things like that. Um, let's go with for the most terrific mom. And I'm just eyeballing that. And maybe we stamp it with the red just to bring that red back. What do you think? Let's go for it. Or you know what, let's go with the lighter color. Let's go with the blush because um, I only used a little bit of that in the background and that way it'll kind of pull that back up. I might have to stamp it a couple times because it's a very light color. I think I used blush, did I use coral? Now that I think about it. Nice, so I'll do it one more time. We've been getting artsy guys. Hopefully I've been imparting different ways of using markers, inks, you know, watercolor, the airbrushing. I mean, there's lots of kinds of fun things we've been doing. Okay, I'm going to let that dry completely. Now, if I had to choose to use some water-based marker or, you know, something to color this in a little bit, this will reactivate because it's just a water-based ink, but the hybrid ink shouldn't reactivate with water or alcohol ink markers, okay? But I'll be right back. I think there's one other thing I want to do, and I don't know if you've ever seen teapots where just this part is gold and, like, the handle is gold. That might be lovely. We have those metallic um, watercolors, so we'll do that. But I don't want to do it first and then run through my machine because if I didn't wait long enough for it to dry, you know, all these things. But I thought, well, I can just, I also want to cut it out correctly. And I don't know if I can just see right through this. Um, I mean, that's pretty good. But if I'm going to do a drop shadow, I thought, oh, what about a gold drop shadow? So I'm going to run this through this gold paper. And I'll have that. And then I'll go ahead and cut it out. And then I'll do the gold painting so I hope that makes sense but we're just gonna get this guy on here this will help me do my aperture so I cut a little bit closer to how I would want it to cut um, let me go ahead and just cut this guy down here and maybe here I don't know how much of this will fit on the carrier here uh, maybe a little bit closer <laughs> there and then I'm going to have to cut some of this way. So I might use this for drop shadow. So we have our beautiful background and all that. And get rid of that guy. Do not let this come away. Just kind of flap it open so you can see where you're going to be cutting. Do a better idea. That looks really good. Pop it back down and make sure it's in that same groove. I'm going to try to stick that down. And then we also need to get a little bit more washy. that one there and maybe this one across here something that's going to really help us and I need to get rid of this excess paper so this will go through my marquee sorry that was a little bit loud okay and hopefully that didn't shift too much I did see it move but you know all right and I'm going to hold it as I'm running it through as much as I can too much on me and there we go pretty good okay let me clean up and we'll start pulling this together really guys oh my goodness before we go too far let's get this guy going so I'm gonna close up a little bit for you and you know this is just something I've noticed in teapots and things like that so I'm gonna take this brush and I'm gonna grab some of this gold right here and I'm gonna be careful about it because I think this has quite a bit of pigment and I don't want it to go over the black lines too much but I'm just gonna bring it in here and just carefully color this in gold. So I'll do the handle. And get a little more. And depending on how much water you dilute it with, you can get a really thick gold 
color too. I'm not even squeezing this, just so you know, it's just whatever wetness is on the brush. I'm going to cover in, color in this little dome part. And then a whole spout, basically. And like I said, I'm just trying to stay away from the black lines because this is very pigmented. It'll just kind of cover it up. It's no big deal if you get it on there, but I'm just being careful of that. Because I'm not just like going over the lines all willy-nilly. I'm trying to take some care. And then this guy. So just kind of following that, if that was an imaginary line. And I'm just going to color this whole thing into the top. Okay guys, so I just color that in fully again with the metallic set. Um, looking really gorgeous. On the background of the other one I used the um, Brights watercolor set, that blue, that tealish color that we have back there. So okay, now I'm going to let this dry and we'll pull it all together. Now this is a complete four and a quarter by five and a half. And I usually cut it down a little bit, but I like the way it just looks so soft on the edges, the way I watercolor. If I cut it now it's going to look really like cut off on some parts, so I'm just going to leave the whole thing. Which is not like me, I know, but that's okay. So I'll be right back. Hey okay, guys, so a two size card, which is wait, eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. We have this beautiful thing. Now, of course, it's all wonky from, you know, having been watercolored and all that kind of good stuff. It might still even be a little bit wet. Um, I do like putting little black speckles. So if you wanted to get your black watercolor and throw some speckles on there, that looks really lovely too. I'm going to really put this tape all over. I chose to use this instead of a wet glue because I just feel like it has enough water on it already so I'm just going to use a dry glue for now. You could definitely run this through the whole um, one of these guys. You know, just pop it in there and get all the gray dots on the back. And I haven't done this in a very long time where it's the whole piece of paper on the card so let me... I keep my fingers behind so that I don't stick it down too prematurely. That looks pretty good. I'm going to turn this over. Give it a good squish since this is paper that's ready to go or glue adhesive that's just going to stick as soon as you do it. <laughs> that's what we have. Pretty. And then we have this guy. I haven't thought about the drop shadow yet. This way. This way. Hmm. I kind of like the way it pops out the bottom here. But at the same time, I like this. Hmm. What are we doing? Let's go like that. Yeah, okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay, we're going to do it this way. I'm just used to putting it top left, and that's just how I see it, and that's how I'm going to do it. So um, let's get some of this. And then we'll get some dimensionals behind this guy after it's one unit. So just some glue. It's still a little bit wet itself. So something like that. I'm going to hold that and I'll put some dimensionals on the back of this, okay? I'll be right okay, back. Guys, so we have our card base to have some dimensionals on that guy. There's all kinds of little sprigs and other things you can cut. I mean, if you would like that kind of thing. That looks really pretty. I'm just going to pop this on here and push down. There's, sometimes I'll turn it over and squish from the back, but this time I'll just use that. So, hey, there's another way to use that. <laughs> oh my gosh, look how cute. I'm going to add one more thing. I do have... Um, the new Dime Press um, enamel dots with binder in the spring tones. And I had mentioned this in another video, and I think I said it has hearts, uh, flowers, and hexagons. It's actually dots, sorry. I was like, I think it's hexagons, but then no. Uh, yeah, they're dotsy. So let's check these out, and maybe I'll add a few little hearts or something to it here. Again, we have the stamps for that. You can definitely just stamp little hearts, or the die cuts of the little hearts. Um, so let's see the colors that are in here. Let me back up a little bit. Am I going closer? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> okay, it says it has orange, black, turquoise, purple, yellow, and green. So again, look how pretty. Um, I wonder if they're calling this one orange. Maybe that's not quite the colors that are in here. I don't know. That looks very red to me. So it might be an orangey red, so like a tomato red. So there's the flowers, the hearts, again different sizes, right? The dots. And then we go into these light pink ones. Super cute. And then we have some yellow. There you go. And then this is a very light, pretty, almost like Tiffany blue, right? The little flowers, the hearts, and the dots. This is what I would consider orange or orangey yellow, so you have that one there. The flowers, the hearts, 
and the dots and then your purple or kind of a lilac pinky color huh very springy very cute and for this application i think i'll probably use i want to use the hearts and i'll use these pink ones well you know what the red ones would really pop too so how about we use both colors and i'm just gonna put some up here i love how traditional that looks with the artsiness of it even look i mean look at the leaves they look really cool okay so maybe a medium sized heart and then a couple little guys um and with these i normally pick them up by hand because they are enamel they're kind of jelly like so if i push on it with something i could possibly dent it so i just usually grab them with my hand and cute like that little heart there and a couple little red ones you know what maybe this size because this one's a little bit smaller and then a little tiny one and you can have them coming out of the little spout like steam or something but there you go super cute and sweet thanks for watching guys thank you so much Diane Press Sayings items for review I'll have images come up I'll have all the links in the description box and I'll see you all at the next one bye now